Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in today's video, we're going to talk about 3MF export from the Manufacture Workspace in Fusion. Now, I just did a video talking about what happened to the Save as Mesh dialog, and we went into how to use Fusion as a slicer. We talked about some of the basics that we needed to do to set it up. Uh, and with that, I got a couple comments about exporting 3MFs and if they could take the file from Fusion Manufacturing Workspace in this case and take it to another slicer. So I thought I would cover that here in this video. We're gonna get into how to do that. And we're gonna also talk about what happens in a couple different slicers. We'll look at the Kira slicer, we'll look at Orca slicer, and we'll also look at Creality, the one that I use. So we have this whale shark. Again, this is what we talked about in the last video. We've modeled this thing. We've set it up for print and place modeling. So part of the criteria here is that it needs to be in this orientation or all the parts need to be together while we print it. And what I did was I just added a simple support to one of the pieces here so we can kind of see how that works. And basically what happens at this point when we think of a 3MF file is we think about all these sort of magical metadata settings that we can then send to another utility and then just have it sort of ready to go. Well, in reality, that's not really the way that it works. A 3MF file can contain metadata and it can contain certain bits of information, but some of it gets lost in translation depending on where that data comes from. So the way that most people would try to do this is go to your file and export menu and export a 3MF. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the way that this works from the manufacturing workspace. You're not gonna get any information out of it. You're just gonna get a mesh file. So what you need to do is you go to actions and there's this 3MF scene export. So this is the one where you get a bit more information. You can determine whether or not you wanna send data about the machine. Uh, in this case, any settings on the machine itself. You can send information about the supports if you want to include them. And there's also a checkbox here for volumetric model. Uh, so what that is, is if you're using the volumetric lattice tool in Fusion, it's part of the design extension, then it can be included or excluded. And part of the reason for that is because volumetric lattice data is a graphical preview on the screen until you generate it as a mesh. And it still leaves the original body sort of Un, unadjusted. It's so you have a copy of that original body and Fusion can send that or it can send the lattice data with it. So with supports, we can include it as a support type. Um, we can also include it as a model type or we can exclude supports altogether. And that's pretty much the main bit of what you have in terms of options. When you go to metadata, there's information about um, the setup name. So in this case, it's setup six. I'm just gonna call this uh, whale shark the designer, the copyright description, all that information. So you can fill this stuff out if you want to and include that, or you can click the 3MF metadata checkbox and just not send any of that with it. Uh, it's really up to you. And if you open up certain file types in say like a text editor, so if you ever open up an IGES file in a text editor, you can see a lot of information about the computer and who modeled it and where, you know, timestamps and things like that, um, including the, the mathematical data to recreate that solid body or that, that file. So that kind of metadata can go along with the 3MF file format. If you don't know, uh, then just some basic information. STL files are triangular mesh files. Um, OBJ files have the option to include non-triangular mesh elements. And then when we get into files like FBX and 3MF in this case, they can start to contain other data about the material properties. And in this case, we're specifically talking about 3D manufacture format. So we're talking about uh, settings for 3D printers. So what we're going to do is I'm going to export this. I'm just going to toss it in my downloads file and I'll just call it whale shark um, export 3MF. And it goes through the process. It doesn't take very long. And then once it's done, we close that out. So now here's the part where you're probably wondering is what does that data look like in a slicer? Well, so I've got my Creality print slicer, the one that I use, version 4.6 or whatever it is. I'm not, not really sure anymore. But basically, this is the older version of Creality print. It's not the newer version. But I am using it for my K1 Max. So you can see the printer selected here is a K1 Max. And I have my PLA settings right here. If I go to open or import the 3MF file. Uh, so basically, what's going to happen is it'll bring it in. It's going to bring the model, and it also will bring the support. Uh, but that's pretty much it. You notice that it didn't automatically 
grab a different nozzle. It didn't grab a different printer. Uh, it was originally set up in Fusion as an Ender 6. And I don't have an Ender 6 in this list, but it did not bring that information in. So what we have here right now is we've got the model, we've got the supports, and it's in the right position. It's in the center of the machine, and I could just slice it and be on my way. So that works pretty well. But again, it didn't it didn't bring any additional machine information like we maybe thought it would. Uh, if we go into the Orca slicer, uh, so what I found is that if you do this open project 3MF, it's actually quite a bit more picky with the 3MF files. And you can see here, loading model file failed. It says it doesn't contain any geometry data. I, I know it does because I brought it in and I opened it in Creality Print, but Orca slicer, for whatever reason, does not like it at all. Um, again, still the same settings, still K1 Max, still the um, high-speed PLA material. But if we go to the Cura Slicer and we do the same thing, so we're going to open a file, we're going to select the same 3MF file. Uh, this one does something kind of crazy with it. So it opens the 3MF, but the models are all automatically placed in a different orientation. And the problem with this is it, it does bring in the supports. We can see it kind of the little support on the mouth right there. But the problem with this is this was designed as a print in place model, which means that it's not going to print properly. We'll never be able to assemble these pieces back together because they need to be printed in the correct orientation. It also did not pick an Ender 6 ma uh, machine, even though I have an Ender 6 in my list here in the Cura Slicer. So again, it brings the model in, it brought the support in, but for whatever reason, it changed the orientation of this and it doesn't, again, it doesn't bring in any of that information about the specific machine or settings that we were using. So I think the general thing here is that the process, it, it can happen. We can see it with the Creality Slicer. I was able to bring it in in the correct orientation and uh, you can see that it does print the support and it does print everything else but it's using the print settings that we have here in this slicer. When I tried to open it up in the Orca slicer or in the Kira slicer, I would not I would not treat those as valid results because the model orientation and position changed. Are there other options that you can configure and tweak and maybe get that to work? Yes, sure. But the main reason that you would want to do this is if for some reason the settings in building a support for your model are better suited to what you're doing in Fusion, and then you would transfer that 3MF, the, the 3MF, or export the scene, I should say. That would be the only reason that I would try to do this. Now, the, the settings to configure supports inside of Fusion are actually uh, pretty good. There are a lot of density settings that we can customize. We can modify the way that the density is for the tree supports. They're calling it a bouquet, but um, there are also some bracing options. So basically, let me hover over this so you can see the tooltip. Uh, so basically, we would be able to create stronger supports if you're building a model off the platform in some way. Uh, we can also determine whether or not we want to project it to the platform. If we want to do on-model support, we can do that, which is um, kind of handy. And again, we can configure all different types of things. So if we want to customize the way in which we build the support, instead of the five, uh, five edges on the polygon, we can make them six, change the angle, make the profile um, build out in a different way. All these different options can be configured pretty easily inside of Fusion. But you just kind of have to think, do, do I need that level of control? And if I do, is there a benefit to then taking this from Fusion to another slicer. Maybe Fusion doesn't currently support your machine, like it doesn't have the K1 Max or, or Bamboo Labs printers, and then maybe that's a reason why you would take it out. Uh, personally, I, I don't really see a good need for that. Um, I haven't ever run into a situation where I couldn't configure supports in another slicer, but if you do, if, if you run into that problem, then maybe this is an option for you. Uh, so hopefully that answers the question on how to get a 3MF file exported from Fusion's manufacturer workspace into another slicer. If you're using something else besides the Orca slicer or the Cura slicer or the Creality one that I showed here, then definitely play around with it. See if it works better for you or not. Um, I found that it only really worked okay on the older um, the older Creality slicer for me.
but that's not to say that it doesn't work for you in your own slicer. Now, if you have any questions on this or any other follow-ups that I can maybe try to answer, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.